For all the stuff in our world, there's a story of how it came to be. Hello, I'm Brian Unger. Coming up... From Main Street to Midtown, taking the fire engine to new heights. And it may be sweet, but it's not simple. Making sugar. There is one vehicle on the road that has to run perfectly every time it leaves for its destination. And once it gets there, it's got to work perfectly every time. The fire engine. We're at Sutphin Corporation in Central Ohio. We want to find out what makes these trucks a dependable lifesaver for the men and women who fight fires and for the people who are stuck in them. And to get the occasional cat stuck in a tree. Now they make three different kinds of models of fire engines here at Sutphin. We're going to focus on two. These big aerial platforms like this one and this one. The pumper, the first one, out of the firehouse. Both get their start at the chassis plant in Springfield, Ohio, where they custom build an average of 200 fire engines a year. Leroy Nupp here is the plant manager here at Sutphin. This is a pumper. This and is a pumper. It, so this, this frame will need to support how much weight? This, this one will have to support about 40... 40,000 plus pounds. 40,000 pounds, that includes? Water, okay. body, equipment, the whole nine yards. And for an aerial, tack on an extra 20 to 30 tons for the ladder and other parts. To carry this heavy load, Sutphin uses double steel rails attached by bolts instead of welds. Really, when you're flying down on, say, a, a New York City street, these have to be able to hit those potholes, but still <laughs> keep together. Next, the axles and suspension drop in, a coat of paint goes on for corrosion protection, and our frames move on to the engine department. Well, this is what gets you to the fire, just in time. They're all diesel-powered engines, 375 to 525 horsepower, top speed, 70 miles per hour, automatic transmission. Well, we put the power in the package, and now it's time to lower the cab down on this frame. Sutphin manufactures its own cabs. This is how they arrive at the chassis division, raw. These are made of aluminum. They're lightweight. They come in eight different sizes and shapes. But to keep them lightweight, so fire departments can concentrate on carrying the important stuff like personnel, firefighting equipment, and water. Now, to get this to look like this, we got to go to paint. No one knows for it's sure why the, fire uh, engines are painted red, the but the accepted reason and is obvious. They stand out. What color of is this? Of course, this? not this every red is created sort of equal. So, and there are two reds? There's more than two. There's uh -huh. probably several hundred reds. I'd hate to put several them hundred on. reds. Yeah. A lot of cities have just their own specific. It even goes into detail. They have their own mix, and nobody else can use it. Yeah. Really? They have like patented red paints right. for their fire engine. Once a fire department settles on a color, Sudfin applies three coats of airplane grade paint that can withstand extreme heat, followed by a clear coat to protect against fading. When the paint dries, cabs are buffed and shined. And the interior lights and upholstery are added. The interior is designed to get firefighters to a blaze safely and quickly. These seats right here, these have compartments that are carved out. You can put the oxygen tanks in them, secure them, so when the firefighter sits down in the chair and is taken off to go rescue someone or put out a fire, they snap in. They buckle up, and they're off. Fully loaded, the cab finally meets its chassis. The cabs here are so lightweight that you can literally hold them up with your finger. And a hoist. After our cab is wired and dressed up with bumpers and trim, we have what looks like a fire engine. But it can't fight a fire yet. 
How do you turn it on? So we'll test drive this cab to Sutphin's body plant, where cabs are fitted with pumps and ladders. Nice. Like the chassis, the engine body is custom designed, and it's built to hold the hoses, ladders, and other equipment. Workers stamp and shape giant sheets of aluminum into smaller pieces and then weld them together, forming equipment cabinets that will hold essential firefighting and rescue tools like hoses and the jaws of life. After the equipment cabinets meet the chassis, it's time to give our pumper a heart. Well, if there were a beating heart in a fire engine, this would be the heart. And like a heart, a human heart, it can't fail, ever. And if it does, well, the body fails, or in this instance, right. the truck fails. Is that right? Exactly. I'm with Ken Kreese here of Sutphin, and this is really what fights the fire, the centrifugal pump. This particular pump is 1,500 gallons a minute. 1,500 gallons is about 600 times more water per minute than a typical kitchen faucet. And a pumper truck has many faucets that all need to be running simultaneously at full blast. Two here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen places where water is coming out of this pump. Here's how the pumper does it. When firefighters shift the engine from drive to pump mode, a vacuum sucks water into a 12-gallon cavity. When the cavity fills, an impeller, which acts like a boat propeller, spins that water at incredible speeds. That spinning, known as centrifugal force, creates tremendous pressure, which forces the water out through the multiple valves. How do you know this pump works when it rolls out the door? Extensive testing. Nearby Sutphin Pond will serve as our water source. Well, right now we want to test how many gallons per minute we're spraying from this hose. Gallons per minute and pressure. Okay. Oh, here it goes. Is that a gauge or something? It What's is. It's a, called a pitot gauge. The pitot gauge measures the velocity of water. We'll run the pump for four hours at 1,500 gallons per minute. If the flow is constant, our pumper is good to go. Oh, yeah. I mean, this wants to pull back on me big time. It's like wrestling a boa constrictor. Plain City, Ohio, your pumper is ready. While the pumper is a must-have for every fire department, aerial platforms, the big boys of the firefighting world, come in handy when firefighters need to attack fires in hard-to-reach places. Both the ladder and platform are assembled here at the body plant. There's only one way to fit a 100-foot ladder on a fire truck, and that's to nest five 25-foot ladders, one inside the other, so that they extend like a telescope. Then the ladder gets electrical wiring and two sets of pipes to carry water to the platform. And finally, the whole thing is attached. Now, where the ladder is mounted is the key to its stability. Sutman has encountered many design challenges, engineering obstacles to overcome in order to make this ladder extend perfectly every time without fail, without collapsing, and to give the truck a sense of stability. Sutman installs two solid steel stabilizers that pop out from the sides, tripling the fire engine's footprint to an incredible 21 feet. By positioning the area where we're doing the middle, it gives us that center of gravity, but now it allows us to rotate. As you can see, we're over top of the cab. We can rotate over top of that cab, extend all the way out, and keep the truck low enough and continue to fight fire. So you can pull the truck right up to the fire, but pull into it head on right. and extend out over it. Right. On one of these platforms, up to four firefighters with two hoses can attack fires from above or pull victims from a tall building without having to enter it. Four months of assembly, and we've got a fleet of fire engines. Don, what's the best way to handle these levers? Ease into it. 
until you start to move. Keep it towards you for retract. Thank you for flying Sutton Fire Engine Airlines. All right, everybody, back to work.